Are you trying to drain your water heater and it just doesn't seem to want to drain or it's draining a trickle? Maybe you've left it on overnight and it's not flowing. I have three simple steps to guarantee that I can get your water heater to flow. I've broken the video into three sections. The first step is to show you exactly how to get your water heater to drain. If that doesn't work, I have some tips and tricks that will guarantee one way or the other we're gonna get this, we're gonna get the water out. And then section three is to explain why we're why the water heater is not draining in general. Section number one, let's do the traditional way of draining the water heater. I'll go over it in concept and then I'll show you how it's done. This little drain down here is the drain valve for the water heater. Now, it's likely that there's all sorts of sediment built up behind here, and after we hook up our garden hose, who knows if it's actually gonna drain. So, I'm gonna go through the process and show you exactly how we would normally do it. And there's a couple different ways. We'll start with step one, so let's get going. The first step is we've taken a garden hose and we've connected it to the drain valve that's equipped on the water heater itself. Before we shut down the water incoming into the tank, we're gonna open the valve. And you can hear the water rushing out. The reason why we're doing this is because at the bottom of this tank, there is a ton of built up sediment from the minerals extracting itself from the water and building up at the bottom of the tank. So by opening the valve up under pressure without turning the water off up top, it allows us to flush the sediment that's gonna clog up the filter, or not the filter, but the drain out of the water here. So basically anything that's near this thing will just get sucked out and forced out of this hose right here. We're gonna run, let this run for about 60 seconds. That'll ensure that anything that's near it is jammed out. And now let's go up to the top of the water heater. We're going to turn the valve that lets the water into the water heater and also gives it pressure. We're gonna turn that off. So this is on and then perpendicular is going to be off. So now we wanna repeat the same process at the bottom of the tank again. So this time we're going to open the valve again this is just a quarter turn valve. Sometimes you'll have a plastic valve on here. For example, uh, the Ream Performance Series from Home Depot gives you a plastic valve. If you have that valve, you're kind of screwed. Um, taking them out, sometimes they'll crack inside the threads and then your water heater is pretty much toast. So if you have a plastic valve down here, I wouldn't even try this. So next thing is we need to turn the water heater off. So on your thermostat, you're gonna see all the settings for the heat and then you're also gonna see a setting for pilot as well as off. So we're gonna turn it over to the off mode as well as shut the valve off. So you'll know it's off when it's perpendicular to the pipe. Like this is on, this is off, which makes relative sense. Now that I've got the water heater drain open and I've got the incoming water line off, it is not actually draining, nothing's coming out. So, and the reason why is because it's air locked. In order to get the water to come out, we need to let air in. So right now we've got no way for the air to get into the tank. For example, in this straw, right now I've got my finger over the top. As soon as I let it out, the water comes out. So basically we need to let our finger off the straw in the plumbing system and allow the air to get into the tank so we can drain it. So I'll show you how we're gonna do that, come with me. Okay, so now that we've got the water heater, the valves open, the incoming water off, we're going to open up a hot water line. This is gonna allow the air to seek back into the water heater and let it flush. So we've opened up the hot water side in one of the faucets, and it happens to be that those faucets are lower than this water heater, so it's not gonna drain that way. So the second thing that will guarantee you can get air in the tank and let the water out is to loosen up one of the supply lines. This is a supply line out of the tank. So what I'm gonna do is basically just release the collar And do you hear that? That is the air being sucked in. Now the air can go down into the water heater. So let's go outside and see if it's draining. If you live in San Diego and you need help doing a repair or replacement, we're more than glad to come out and give you a quote or you can go on our website at quickwaterheater.com and check out our advertised all-inclusive pricing right on our website. Ah, and this is the desired result. So it's draining now but this is actually a newer water heater. If you have an older water heater, that process we just used probably won't work. So let's go back inside and I'll show you what to do next if this, doesn't, if this isn't happening for you. If 
the traditional method of just hooking up a hose and shutting off the valves didn't actually do anything, that means that you probably have too much sediment in the bottom of the water heater and it's never going to you next is a special technique that we've kind of figured out over the years to get the water heater to drain every time. So here's what it is. It is a three quarter valve and you can see this hole. And once I pull that other valve out, you'll see that this hole is three or four times the size. So anything that's stuck in the water heater right now will be able to pass through this, but it will not pass through the hole on the other valve, which is about like that. First step is to remove the drain valve. So what I'm gonna do is create the suction similar to what I did with the straw, keeping my finger over it so that when I take the valve out, it doesn't shoot water everywhere. We're going to turn the water off and then I'm gonna relieve the pressure. I'll be right back, I'm just gonna open the hot water faucet. Or you can also release the pressure from here. So you just wanna let it do its thing until it no longer, until you, can, you can't hear the water running in the tank any longer. Okay, so what I've basically done is created a vacuum. The water heater valve is off, so there's no incoming pressure. And I've opened the valve so that all the water pressure will remove itself from the tank and go down out the hose. So basically there's a vacuum in here. There's no air being allowed in, so it won't drain. So when I move this valve down here, it'll just come off. So I will leave it open to verify that we're not gonna get any water. Oh, it's actually, it got so much vacuum that it's sucking in the drain valve. So that's open, no, barely any water's coming out. Here's the most important thing. This is a new valve that we're gonna install on the bottom of the water heater. The hole is significantly larger, probably three times, four times the size of the manufacturer's drain valve, so that if anything's actually in the way in there, it'll drain right out of this hole. What's happening currently is the hole's too small. There's probably a piece of sediment stuck in there that just won't allow any water to get by. So I'm gonna show you how to put this thing together real quick, and then we're gonna drain the water here. You're gonna wanna get some plumber's tape and wrap your threads. Just gonna screw it together like that. And then take the other end. And do the same thing. Okay. So now we did, We have two one and a half inch nipples going into a three quarter ball valve. I suggest using a pipe wrench for this because these things can really get wedged in there, especially if the water heater is older. Okay, remember, if you don't have a vacuum started, meaning that you've turned the water off up top and you have drained down the water to create pressure, or like a negative pressure inside the tank, if you remove this, it's gonna shoot water at you. So because I've created a vacuum in there, it will, that's all it's gonna do. Get some tape on here. We're gonna permanently install this so that anytime in the future, if we need to drain the tank for service or for replacement, it will drain easily. Okay, so this is different just for demonstration purposes, but in theory, I would spin all these joints together much tighter when I would do the final installation. But now we can connect the garden hose to it. Like that. All right, so now I'll let that go again. Now this time the hole is huge. Anything that's stuck in there will just flow right out of the tank. So now we're gonna do the same thing we did before and let some air into the tank. We're gonna do that through the hot supply line, or you could do it through the cold, whichever. And you can hear it gurgling in there. Get that out of the way, and now we're gonna go outside and make sure it's draining. All right, perfect. And now we have proper flow. So regardless of what water heater you have, that method is gonna guarantee get you some flow. And if it doesn't, 
basically open up the valve, jam a screwdriver down there, and you can get anything out if it stops. But that's pretty much as guaranteed as it gets. Okay, so as you saw, bigger hole, your tank's gonna drain. The stock drain valve that they have on the water heaters really is pretty much useless, um, especially after the first couple years or if you have any hard water minerals in your tank, which is almost everybody. So if you're interested in learning what this is, how to build it, jump over to our website, quickwaterheater.com, click on the FAQ section, and then look up water heater drain valve. You'll find this thing there. I'll show you exactly how to make it, where to get the parts, and how to install it properly. Okay, and the final section is section three. Why won't this thing actually drain? Well, what happens is when you heat water up, it separates the calcium and magnesium from the water and deposits all the minerals at the bottom of the tank. As they settle, they kind of compress like dirt and eventually it will clog up the valve. If you realize what's happening here, you also have to realize that this is happening throughout your whole house. All the pipes are collecting sediment inside of them. As sediment collects, it also can create pinhole leaks, um, it creates, you know, the minerals that build up on your shower doors, etch into your fixtures, basically replacing all your faucets and, and anything that touches water constantly because of these minerals. Uh, the best way to get them out is a water softener or a null salt softener. If you're interested in that, you can always find out more information on our website at quickwaterheater.com. Um, you don't need to replace your water heater as often as you are if you actually just remove the minerals and treat the water first. If you live in Southern California, we have absolutely terrible water and it's most likely you're replacing your water heater way too often. If this video was helpful for you, please leave us a thumbs up, subscribe to our channel, and if you have any questions or comments, please leave in the comment section below and we'll get back to you.